It's time for the Moto America AMA FIM North American Road Race Championship. Our second round of 2024 for Mission King of the Baggers from Austin, Texas at Circuit of the Americas during a MotoGP Grand Prix of the Americas weekend. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the broadcast. I'm Greg White standing alongside two-time national champ Jason Pridmore. Now, Jason, the sun is shining. Qualifying is done. The challenge race is over, and we are set the stage for a great weekend of racing. Yeah, there's no question about it. Troy Herfoss comes in wins that challenge race after we saw his teammate Tyler O'Hara set a new lap record and put the bike on pole. Kyle Wyman just to tick off in that qualifying session. It was a crazy first race that we got to see for the weekend, even though it was only three laps long. And Jason, you mentioned Tyler O'Hara with a 215 flat. Let's take a look at some highlights from his qualifying effort. Yeah, for Tyler O'Hara coming here, setting this bike on pole position today at Coda, I think was a big win for him. He hasn't won a race in a year, Greg, and the hardest part for that for Tyler is he's got a very fast teammate that we know is going to win races and has won races already. But Tyler Hare is a former champion. He's going to come out swinging. He's going to come out strong. Had some problems in the challenge race, but he'll be fighting today for a race win. Yeah, Tyler O'Hara may have pole position, but all eyes on Troy Herfoss. And with more, here's the third member of our broadcast team, Hannah Lopa. Greg, Troy Herfoss is quickly becoming a fan favorite and making a name for himself here in Moto America. And while he hasn't seen this track, he's already up to speed very quickly. Not only did he win the Mission Challenge, he's starting from the front row for both races this weekend. When I asked him how he was able to learn this track so quickly, his secret? playing video games so he actually simulated what this track would look like on a video game and then applied all of that knowledge that he gained here in person. It's safe to say he's going to be one to watch this season. All right, thanks, Hannah. Well, Jason, let's take a look at Circuit of the Americas. This 3.4 mile course has 20 corners to it. Yeah, and it's a very unique track. You go up to this very interesting turn one straight uphill. You cannot actually see where this turn starts. You can't see the apex, Greg, right, when you're tipping in. But it's only one of three of these very slow corners that these big bikes are going to use a lot of torque to get out of. After turn one, you go through that series of very famous S's here at Coda. You get to turn two, another very slow corner that leads onto the back straightaway. These guys are going to be wide open, 170 plus mile an hour into the heaviest braking part of the track, turn 12. Once they go through turn 12, they're going to go through a stadium section. And then the big, long right hand sweeper behind the pits is where time can be made up as well before you head back to the start finish line. And the last corner, Greg, is where you can make a last lap move. And it's a short run to the flag. We can't wait to see how these bikes are going to race it up. Rakhile Wyman, he is the championship points leader currently. Can he hold on to that? But what about this guy, Bobby Fong? Last time we were here, he led both races. Can he win it this time? Mission King of the Baggers coverage is brought to you by Mission Foods, the world's leading brand for tortillas and wraps. And by Drag Specialties, an industry-leading distributor of aftermarket parts and accessories for Harley-Davidson and custom V-twin motorcycles. Wide shots here at the MotoGP Grand Prix of Americas, Austin, Texas, Circuit of the Americas, as we are getting ready for race one of Mission King of the Baggers. And Jason Pridmore, yesterday during the challenge race, we were treated to this very similar win. And interestingly enough, Tyler O'Hara had talked about being able to get deep into turn number one and qualifying with that headwind. But what do you think? How's it gonna play? for these 620 pound plus Mission King of the Bagger motorcycle. Well, remember we had the challenge race yesterday, Greg, and it was three laps instead of two. So these guys got a little bit of a feel of some things as far as what they can expect today. The big talk last evening when I went down to the pits is the guy who won, Troy Herfoss, on the 17 Indian. Everybody feels like he's got a little bit of pace. And if you looked at morning warm up this morning, you saw he was the only, he got back down to the 15s along with three other guys, but he was 15-2 compared to Bobby Fong's 15-7. Both Wyman and Raspoli on the factory Harleys, they've been trying some new things uh, this morning in warm up as well. They were both also able to get down into the 15s as well as Hayden Gillum, our defending champ. So you've really got five guys that kind of have separated themselves. All right, riders getting to the grid. All right, time to take a look at our starting grid here for race number one, Mission King of the Baggers. And it's Tyler O'Hara 
who is on pole position from Kyle Wyman and Troy Herfoff. Yeah, we're going to be looking for things from Tyler today after his mishaps yesterday on the bike. Bobby Fong, Raspoli, and Gillum. Yesterday, Tyler Hoyera started from pole break and had that problem, but was able to continue. So hopefully he'll be able to do that today. Rocco Landers, own sword, and Corey West are there on row three with, with uh, Travis Wyman, Max Splinters, and Jake Lewis rounding out our field. So again, th the big key here at Coda is getting up that front straightaway as clean as you can in and through turn one. Um, that is definitely a spot uh, on these big bikes, Greg, where it can get pretty narrow at the top of that hill. All right, six laps scheduled around this 3.4 mile circuit. And really, Jason, the key is getting up to turn one, which is probably one of the more interesting first corners we have in all of motorsport. Yeah, no question. It's uh, you, you're accelerating up that hill and you got to remember these riders right now are coming from about halfway down that straightaway. So they're getting up there a little bit slower, but being able to find the proper markers and stuff from a slower speed heading up into turn one and getting through it um, is key. All these riders, they were all here last year uh, for the first time, so they know what it takes to get through that turn uh, and just get everybody through there clean is Good. the important thing. That number one plate, of course, is Hayden Gillum on the Revzilla Motul, Vance and Hines, Harley Davidson. He's starting from position number six, but he's got a good spot on the inside. Upper left part of your screen, you're going to see those red lights go on. When they're off, we're racing. Here we go, Mission King of the Baggers, race number one from Coda, and we're off and away, and it looks like our pole sitter's got a good launch, even though he wheelies a couple times. So is it going to be the 29 who leads us into turn number one? It is Aiden Gillum on the one, trying to go up the inside and grab third position. And it looks like he's going to hold on to that. So good job by Hayden Gillum to come from the second row in sixth place qualifying, now up to third. That's a great start from Hayden Gillum. As you say, you can see Kyle Wyman has got his teammate, James Raspoli, right behind him here. And uh, out front, though, O'Hara with a good start. And uh, Herfoss got shuffled back a little bit there, Greg. I believe he's fourth or fifth. He's fifth back there right now. So uh, with Bobby Fong right behind him, these are the kind of the six guys you would expect to kind of separate themselves a little bit from the field. But Herfoss has gone all the way back to that sixth spot from that front row. And while his teammate is out front right now, trying to get away from those two Harleys, factory Harleys right behind him. Max Flinders, last time we saw him in New Jersey at the end of the season, a podium finisher on the yellow bike. Processional onto the back straight away we go. This is that long drag race. And of course you have Harley Davidson and Indian horsepower going after it. Tyler O'Hara behind the bubble of that big fairing. And of course the distinctive feature of those bags on the back of the bike. And you can see the bikes moving around as they approach 165 miles an hour into the heartbreaking zone. Yeah, and you can see they still just stayed in the same spot. Nobody was able to really draft or make any big plays. I know that uh, there's been some gearing changes on a couple of the bikes and as far as trying to get off these corners a little bit better. The unique thing about Coda, Greg, is we've got four really distinct slow turns, this being another one right here. This one doesn't lead on to a big straightaway, but it leads on to something that is going to be a very, very fast right-hander as you see them going around the back of the paddock here in turn 17 and 18. So I know for the factory Harleys, they've been gearing their bikes just a little bit shorter to try to get off the corners a little bit more with those factory Indians. Tyler O'Hara, the 29, doing a great job putting a gap between himself and the rest of the field on the SNS Indian mm. Indian Challenger. And out wide, a couple riders go up and out of the saddle. Yeah, Tyler ends up going real wide in our in this class here. These guys are allowed to go out over that curbing on the exit of turn 19 there, as well as that front straightaway. There is a drainage, Greg, on the outside of turn 19 that can make it. Uh, a little bit scary to get out too far, but you, sh you see Herfoss now has moved up to fifth. He's been able to get by Bobby Fong on that opening lap. Let's get down to Hannah. For Hayden Gillum, he's been feeling off the pace yesterday, and he felt like he had nothing on the rear. It was much better in the challenge than he expected. And they made some more progress in warm up, some more changes, but it's the first time all weekend that they haven't changed the gearing, so they left that alone from this morning to this race. One thing for Hayden Gillum is normally he's racing multiple classes in any given race weekend. This weekend, all of his energy is focused on the baggers, and he said it's been really nice to just hone in on what they have and get this bike dialed in heading to Atlanta in a short week here. Yeah, and you know, for the Vance and I and Harley Davidson rider, there is some information that you can kind of gather from the factory team in terms of that gearing, but 
Hayden just likes to ride his own race, and it's a very tricky situation, Jay, as you deal with a 7,000 RPM limit for the Harley Davidson and, of course, a stock gearbox. Yep. And so whatever those ratios are for the street, sometimes it gets a little bit tricky trying to figure out how to get it dialed in with your sprockets for the racetrack. Yeah, there's no question. And what Vance and Hines has done to their Harley is they've proven that they've got a bike that could be reliable. You remember this championship last year. It was Hayden Gillum and James Raspoli really bringing the fight to the factory teams. And what Terry Vance has uh, put together down there with these baggers is something pretty special to come out and win the championship last year the way they did. And uh, Hayden Gillum's savvy, he's smart, he knows how to uh, get these points in the bag uh, in his pocket. And that's really what helped him win the championship last year. You know he's gonna win races this year, but when you have a race like this and you got these six guys at the front, it's really important, I obviously, to try to win, but it's also important to get the points. So 29 is Tyler O'Hara, SNS. Indian Motorcycles, that's the challenger. He leads the way. He's got a nice little gap going on. Kyle Wyman, the number 33, on that Harley-Davidson factory road glide. And being chased by the number one plate, his teammate James Raspoli, the 43, trying to find some room up the inside on Hayden Gillum. Nothing there. But one of the differences you'll see today, Greg, between this race and yesterday's, being that it's $5,000 winner take all yesterday in a three lap frantic kind of race, it's gonna be a little bit more patience. These guys are gonna see how things are playing out. Tire life does become a, a, an issue for these guys as well when you have six laps around a long 3.7 mile track, uh, 3.4 mile track rather. Um, the thing is, is that, is that tire life could come into play. O'Hara's doing exactly what he needs to do. He looks really good in the places that are gonna be important to be good in. And you see him stretch it out through this first sector. It's really important. Doesn't allow these guys to get close enough to him as he goes down to turn 11 and drives onto that back straightaway. They can't get close enough to draft him. And one of the biggest things I saw for James Raspoli, number 43 on that factory Harley Davidson, is they're constantly looking for grip in the rear. And Raspoli already starting to spin the rear tire. Ooh. I wonder what that came out for. It was a big thing of smoke there as we saw. It looked like, uh, I'm not sure what bike that came off of. Either. It almost looked like it was tire smoke it from did. maybe rear. <laughs> like if you get a chance to look at Mission King of the Baggers up close and personal during the Moto America season, one of the things you'll notice is that the rear brakes on these things are so large, they're the similar size to the front discs you would see on a sport bike. They're huge. Yeah. Some bikes even have oh. two. And Bobby Fong going up the inside. This is what we've seen from Bobby, Jason, yep. at Circuit of the Americas. Bobby, especially in this section, is able to take a lot tighter lines than a lot of the other racers. However, he's given that to, like, kind of put that tool in the toolbox of but some he, of his competitors. And he does it again right here. You can see his entry into this big, long turn right where you're at the same lean angle for a long period of time. Bobby's able to really carve that Indian up underneath people. Let's see if he was able to do it there to Herfoss again. It looks like he was. He goes back past Herfoss and he takes a little bit narrower line coming down there uh, into that uh, turn 19 area as well. So, and James Raspoli now has got by Gillum. So James Raspoli up to third, Gillum back to fourth. You see how the run goes up to the top of the hill here. Gillum's gonna be able to get in the draft and maybe pull out to the left of Raspoli as they get to the top. So the number one, looking for room, nothing. We were talking about Bobby Fong. He's the number 50. He's the fifth bike on track. That's the SDI Roland Sands Racing Indian Challenger. And it looks like Gillum, just with a different line choice, with about two and a half laps to go in Mission King of the Baggers race number one. And you've got to think about it too, Greg, when you say you see a little bit different lines. Think about how wide these bikes are compared to like the bikes that some of these guys have been used to riding in the past. It's, it doesn't really pay to follow, you know, to be able to look around and see what's out in front of a person. Uh, you see Gillum using those line choices as kind of a way of looking around. I'm really surprised to see Herfoss, but still stuck back there in sixth. So James Raspoli currently in third place as he gets the thing sideways, Hannah. He is, Greg, and you know, he was feeling down on laps all weekend, but this morning they found a little bit of something. He's been struggling with the rear on entry. The S isn't anywhere really where there's load on the edge of that tire, but he felt much more hooked up this morning, and you can definitely see that in his riding out on track. He said during this race, he just needs, needs to stay clean after yesterday's challenge. He didn't want to get caught up in any of that again today. Yeah, it's a great point, Hannah. The thing that James has been struggling on the most is off-throttle off -throttle edge grip, like you said, and the team ended up, I think, uh, putting a little bit stiffer spring on the rear of that bike. They've done some gearing changes. And the other thing too, Greg, is the dynamic in that team between Kyle and, and James. They work really well together. They talk about things even when they're off testing and, and, and one will be trying something while the other one's trying something else and they come back with that information. 
Spoli starting to struggle with that rear grip. And if you're new to Mission King of the Baggers Racing, as Bobby Fong tries to go up the inside on Hayden Gillum for position, that's the 50 versus the number one. One of the things I find interesting, Jay, is when you look at a traditional sport bike, generally we're looking at a front counter toot sprocket of, of 15, 16 mm -hmm. teeth. On these bikes, on the Indian motorcycles, you can have 22 teeth on the Harley Davidson's wow. 26 tooth sprockets. And a lot of that has oh. to do with where the chain is in relation to the swing arm angle, taking a bagger and turning it into a race bike. Yeah, you saw Bobby Fong try to There's take a yeah, Bobby Fong took a shot at Hayden Gillum, ran wide, opened up the door for Herfoss. Herfoss is them getting it sideways as they come out of that last corner. Top six guys still throwing blankets over him, and you can see Herfoss is through on Fong for the moment. So if this field has anything for Tyler O'Hara, they're starting to get to the point where they need to formulate a plan. Kyle Wyman closing the gap. It was four tenths of a second between O'Hara and Wyman, the number 29 and the 33 at the beginning of this lap. But there are certain sections, Jason, where this Indian challenger just has this Circuit of the Americas course dialed in. Yeah, we'll talk into Al Ludington at Daytona a little bit. They've made some wholesale changes on this, this Indian bagger and they've made it a lot easier. We're not seeing that bike get as twisted up into the corners as we had seen it in you know, the last couple of years. So that team has been working really hard to try to give their riders a better package, Greg, especially under heavy braking and uh, getting that bike tipped into corners. A lot of times over the last couple of years, we've seen that Indian bagger getting out of shape a lot as Kyle Wyman now looks like he wants to take a shot at O'Hara as they go down in turn 11. We've only got about a lap and a half left and we've not really seen anybody take a shot at O'Hara. So Kyle Wyman now is definitely able to feel the draft off that Indian as they head down that back straightaway. That factory Harley pulls out to the left, Greg. Let's see if he could do anything with O'Hara when they get down to the braking zone in turn 12. Here comes Kyle Wyman. He's going to hold on behind him as they go sideways, but it's Herfoss who's starting to make some moves. Not a lot of room with those bags hanging off the back of that motorcycle, but Herfoss able to get it done, moves himself into third place. You see Bobby Fong has ran wide at the end of the back straightaway, so Herfoss now has got the hurry up. He has got by Gillum. He had got by Fong. Now he's got by Raspoli. So the 17 is on his way forward. He's going to have about a lap and three quarters to do something with the two guys in front of him. Wyman looks definitely really racy right now. He's looking like he wants to try to find a way past and then try to lead a lap. Most important one of, their, of the race, the last one, as they head down towards turn 19. So for Troy Her Herfoss, the Australian, his first season in Mission King of the Baggers, the three-time Australian Superbike champ, really trying to make his mark here in front of this MotoGP crowd. Mission King of the Baggers, here we go. It's going to be the final lap. Wyman spins it up coming out of the final corner. That's going to hurt his drive. But up to turn one we go. With the wind blowing, we'll see who's got the deep corner entry. Yeah, well... Wyman. This is a really important lap for Tyler O'Hara, Greg, because like we said yesterday, we haven't seen this young man win in a little over a year, and uh, we know how capable he is of doing just that. So Troy Herfoss goes quickest lap of the race on that lap at a 15-2. Keep in mind, they qualified at a 15 flat, and right now Herfoss would like nothing more than to get by Wyman and try to make this an Indian 1-2. So you have four factory motorcycles and one privateer bike in that number one of Hayden Gillum on that Revzilla Motul Vance and Hines Harley Davidson. He's starting to lose touch with half a lap to go. So now the battle, it's Indian, factory Harley Davidson, factory Indian, factory Harley Davidson getting after it. Who is gonna have it to the end? Boy, exciting racing here in Mission King of the Baggers. Kyle might take a shot here to try to park Herf, uh, try to park O'Hare and he does. Herfoss is also trying to follow him in. So that's gonna be the thing right there. I felt like Herfoss would be able to draft both these riders in front of him. Now Kyle gets a great run out of that turn 11 down that back straight. He's gonna to have to be a little bit protective because those Indians are gonna be able to try to get in the draft. And let's see, yeah, Kyle's going over to the left to try to try to thwart any thoughts of them going down the inside. O'Hara is in deep. Raspoli trying to go up underneath O'Hara for third. All five of these riders with tons of flat track experience, no electronics on these motorcycles. It's all done with the right wrist. Has Kyle Wyman done enough? At this moment, Kyle's in charge, but Troy Herfoss has been hanging around and he goes up the inside on Wyman. Wyman has to lift. It looked like there might've been some contact. So Herfoss bullies his way into the lead. A good move for Troy Herfoss. Just and a, that might be it. Just a great pass. He set that up really early. He got down the inside of Wyman to where he wasn't able to try to tuck that Harley back in and Herfoss is on his way. So Troy Herfoss makes the move, able to move Wyman and gain that couple tenths of a second. 
As now the corners are running out, here comes Herfoss into the final corner we go. And he's got a couple bike leg lead. For the 33, he's trying to square it up, but it's going to be Troy Herfoss who comes across the line with the big win here at Circuit of the Americas in our first Mission King of the Baggers race. What a move by the Australian late in this race to take victory by two tenths of a second. But that's the experience that this guy has, Greg. He ran around in sixth place for the first four laps of that race. He had picked his points, knew what he wanted to do, made a plan, and you're gonna see him here as Wyman just lets that Harley move out to the right just a little. Herfoss squares him up, gets up underneath, and makes that pass as clean as you like, really. I mean, that's just one of those spots here at Coda where you could try to make that pass and he dived down the inside. Yeah, you gotta give a tip of the cap, too, to Kyle Wyman. He didn't lean on him and try to force the issue and cause himself to crash out. Boy, what a run by Troy Herfoss. And Jason, one, two, three, four, five in this race, all covered by less than one second at the final. It's Herfoss with the win over Kyle Wyman, Tyler O'Hara in third, James Rispoli just another 10th behind him, and Hayden Gillum as well. And here's the race pace over this lap. So you can see a 2.15.2 for Herfoss late in the race yeah, and the best lap go. of the race by Herfoss. Yeah. And a new race lap record. More coverage for Mission King of the Baggers coming up in a moment. SNS Indian Motorcycles rookie. Rookie, yeah. yeah. That's funny. He's rookie in Moto America, <laughs> rookie in Mission King of the Baggers, but with years of racing experience under his belt. And Jay, the teammates celebrate victory, and I'm sure for Tyler O'Hara, he's as happy as you can be by not winning. But Jay, 170 miles an hour on the back straightaway for a 620 pound Mission King of the Bagger motorcycle. Pretty incredible. It's unbelievable when you think about it. Yeah, how fast these guys are going. That's only like 44 mile an hour slower than a MotoGP bike. <laughs> That's it? That's, That's all? It. That's yeah. it, yeah. Got it. Pretty incredible to think that a 215.2, when we were here last time, which was the first time, which would have been about seven months ago, 216.4 was the race record. That was by Kyle Wyman in race number one of Mission King of the Baggers. And then yesterday we had a 215.029 as the qualifying record, the fastest of Mission King of the Baggers ever gone around Circuit of the Americas by Tyler O'Hara, who's on pole position and will be for the next race. Yep. So to go 215.234 in the race, especially as late in the race as it was, pretty incredible. Yeah, no, there's no question in that that just keeps the the amount of technology that's going into these bikes just keeps moving that needle further and further forward in the performance of them. And 15-2, uh, and you look at the first five riders were all in the 15s, as was, I believe, Bobby Fong also in the 15s. He actually ended up getting back on and finishing seventh. Rocco Landers finished sixth. Rocco is 15.9 seconds back. And again, this is a new track and a new series to Rocco, so he's just got to keep plugging along. He knows he can ride with all these guys, but it's just a, such a different beast on this thing. Big win and two for two so far here at Circuit of the Americas. If you didn't see us yesterday, the Challenger race was a three lap dash for cash yep. that Herfoss was able to take victory. And you and I have been walking around the baggers, you know, here and even at, you at Daytona a lot. And this is the guy that everybody's worried about. And you know, Greg, I've heard from quite a few people Troy Herfoss wants to ride a superbike here in America, which would be amazing to see Why as well, he? you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I think if I'm Indian Motorcycles right now, I'm already on the phone with his management trying to button him up for next year. <laughs> yes. Because once we get to Road Atlanta next weekend and the Steel Commander Superbike Series starts, and now you have that group of people in Moto America watching live yeah. Mission Woo! King of the Baggers, which will be there, a lot of people are going to be like, hey, wait a second, yep. let's see if we can get this guy here. So Yeah, and, and for all the other guys that race in this series, you know, they, they know that, that that's the guy right now that's got the target on his back. Herfoss has come out quickly in this championship, arguably could have, he was in the hunt to win both races at Daytona, and uh, you can see the mutual respect there between everybody. Good for Tyler O'Hara. You know, Tyler's such a good team player as well, and he'll get his wins this year. He rode a really good race. Mission King of the Baggers coverage is brought to you by Mission Foods.
the world's leading brand for tortillas and wraps. And by Drag Specialties, an industry-leading distributor of aftermarket parts and accessories for Harley-Davidson and custom V-twin motorcycles. Here's the results, two tenths of a second win for Herfoss over Wyman, Tyler O'Hare there as well. Rispoli and Gillum all within a second of that leader, the race winner. That's going to bode well for this afternoon. Unfortunately for Bobby Fong, running off the track, he ends up in seventh place. We expect him to rebound in race number two. Let's get right down to Hannah with our race winner. A first ever Mission King of the Baggeries, big Baggers victory for Troy Herfoss and Troy, take us through that race. You got kind of shuffled back there at the beginning. How were you able to work your way through the pack and make that pass at the very end for the victory? Yeah, every time I've been on the track this weekend, it's been uh, as long a run as possible. Um, we, we know what's going to happen in the last few laps. And uh, I honestly, I thought I was, I was out of it a bit mid-race. The, the pace was, the race that was being raced, I couldn't, I couldn't ride the same way. And uh, once I settled in and... I uh, got, my, got my pace back, um, I was able to make some passes and hey, it's a credit to the Indian Challenger team. Um, yeah, all the guys from Parts Unlimited, s, &S Drag Specialties, um, Progressive, Mission Foods, I just want to say thank you to everyone for, for bringing me to this great country and, and such a privilege to be here at Kota Moto GP. Congratulations Troy Herfoss, today's race winner. Moving on over second place today, Kyle Wyman. Kyle. You had great control throughout that race, great pace. Take us through that last move at the very end. What were you looking for? Yeah, well, you know, I was taking into consideration everything, you know, following Tyler, looking at his strengths, looking at his weaknesses, and kind of keeping tabs on what was going on behind me. But really all I saw was the 43 the whole race. So, you know, when I passed Tyler, I defended for Tyler. And yeah, I guess I left the door open there and uh, Troy snuck through and took the win. But, you know, for us to get second, it's great points. We still got the points lead. and. Yeah, we're gonna just kind of keep it going from here. So thanks to the Harley team and uh, this road glide is so much fun around this track and it's so cool to see all the fans out here. So uh, yeah, pumped to be here at MotoGP. Thanks so much, Kyle. Congrats, third place today, Tyler O'Hara. Tyler, you led the majority of that race. <laughs> Excellent performance out front. It was really close there at the end. Take us through it. Yeah, what a race. You know, we had the pace and the wind. It was pretty windy out there and I, I was, Riding great, the Indian Challenger's working awesome. Prep by SNS Cycle, backed by Progressive. Everybody that supports us, Drag Specialties, Mission Foods, everybody for getting us here. Oh, that was close, that was close. Hey, uh, my tires started to go off a little bit with three to go there and I, I changed my fuel map and was trying to just manage. And But man, what a show, huh? What do you guys think of that, Austin? Man, that was awesome and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that. We got another one this afternoon. We're gonna go back to do our homework. We're gonna come back ready to fight and uh, yeah, thank you everybody for coming out. Again, thank you, Indian Motorcycle. That's right, Tyler mentioned race two is just around the corner, guys. Yeah, it certainly is, and we're looking forward to that because they definitely are going to do their homework. Now, let's take a look at the championship points. Kyle Wyman now with a five-point advantage over Troy Herfoss early in this season. And James Rispoli sits in there 25 back with your number one plate in fourth. What a race we had. Troy Herfoss with two-tenths of a second margin of victory. We can't wait to see the next one. Well, Jay, I think one of the things that Kyle Wyman brought up, which is really important, is, you know, when you go to Daytona, Daytona is one thing. It's mm -hmm. a unique track on its own. Circuit of the America has its own characteristics. But the biggest thing for this field, Mission King of the Baggers, these riders have been riding together for a couple of years, and Troy's new. So Kyle's thinking, okay, I'm, I'm literally riding to defend against Tyler O'Hara, but then all of a sudden it's her Foss that goes up the inside. Couldn't be a more honest assessment of what Kyle just told Hannah there in, in uh, Victory Circle. I mean, he was defending for somebody. He left the door just a little bit open. And it would be a move that Kyle Wyman would do on anybody else. And literally, that's all it was. You just left the door a tiny bit open. And he was able to sneak through was Troy. So, um, you know, Troy right now just seems like he's got a little bit of pace. And he understands how to get past these guys. And we knew after Daytona, Greg, he lost those races because of the specialty track that Daytona kind of was. He lost those races in the chicane. We knew when he came to some regular circuits that he'd be a lot tougher to beat. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to watch and fun to watch Troy Herfoss all season long. And considering that Hannah told us that he learned this track by playing a video game, 
We'll see how many road courses we have left in the season for Mission King of the Baggers here in Moto America that he's going to be able to get on those video games and check out. And I know that his family's coming over for two and a half months. He's going to really enjoy that once they land here in the States. But so far, so good for Troy Herfoss. And he's going to be on the lips of every Moto America fan as we have a new star that has landed on our shores. All right, so Mission King of the Baggers race number one is in the books. Troy Herfoss with a two tenths of a second margin of victory and smoke coming off the back of the 43. Pretty incredible racing in Mission King of the Baggers. And here's a look at the 2024 calendar. Circuit of the Americas now, then it's off to Michelin Raceway, Road Atlanta, Road America, and all the other ones. So make your plans to check it out. It's going to be a fun season. Mission King of the Baggers race number one. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you for the next one.